Hello everyone, it's Mario. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're back. <laughs> it has been a minute since I've made a video on here. And the reason for that is just because I've been so busy. My job has become a whole nother monster and I barely have time off. And when I do have time off, I'm tired or dealing with like personal stuff. So it's been really hard, uh, but I'm trying my best to get back into doing videos, right? So here we are. We're taking a look at this new Dawson release for Disney's new animated film, Wish. It comes out um, November 22nd. And so, yeah, this Dawson is available on shopdisney.com. The retail price is $99.99. They also released an Asha doll by herself, and she's a singing doll. But to me, it looks like they're exactly the same doll as this one. So I decided to just get the set instead with, you know, all the characters. So in this video, we're going to go ahead, take them out of the box, take a look at everything. And I will do a quick comparison of this Asha doll with Mattel's Asha doll, right? So let's do that. <laughs> let's get started. Here we have the box and it's beautiful. It's humongous and heavy. So keep that in mind. It has a handle for you to carry it. And on this side, we have a little symbol with the Disney logo and little sparkles and stars. We have the symbol here again. On the bottom, we have a picture of Asha herself with the star, and she is beautiful. And it's for ages three and up, the doll set. It says, Wish, doll pack. <laughs> and here you have all the warnings for small parts for children and stuff like that. And there you have the dolls. On the back of the box, we have a beautiful sketch of this city and a picture of Valentino the goat. Now, the whole thing with the movie is that it looks like 2D animation. The backgrounds look hand drawn, and that's pretty much uh, something you can really see in this picture of the city, right? It's absolutely beautiful. Now, the retail price is not on the box, but as I said earlier, it is $99.99. And here they are magically out of the box. We have Queen Amaya. Dahlia, Asha with the star, King Magnifico, and down there we have Valentino the goat. First up, we're taking a look at Dahlia, and she brings her walking stick, as it is described on the website, or a cane, whatever you like to call it. It is made out of plastic, and it's painted brown to resemble wood. Now, as far as some of the artwork, it looks like this is the way that she uses it, the way she holds it. Uh, which perfectly fits right or you can always put it on the little handle on the side it's really up to you and the way that you would want to display her so this is um again dahlia she is inspired by doc from the seven dwarfs and all of her friends are actually supposed to be like the seven dwarfs inspired with the color palettes and everything and it's really cool it seems that dahlia is like her bestie so that's why she's included she does have a pair of glasses, which on my box set, it came loose. It was just loose in the box. So I'm not sure if they're supposed to be like attached to her hair or something, but you know, it is what it is. Now she doesn't really use them close to her eyes. She uses them like at the tip of her nose, which is really cute. <laughs> her face sculpt is amazing. Like they really capture the character. It looks like she jumped right out of the screen, right? She has natural colored lips, brown eyes and brown eyebrows. She has her little uh, bow in her hair, which matches the color of Doc's hat, right? Again, all the colors, even the name start with a D. It's all inspired by the Seven Dwarfs, which is a really cool nod in this film to like the 100th anniversary, right? Her head does have articulation. Her hair is really soft. She just has like a short black bob with bangs, right? Accurate again to the movie. And it's really nice. It doesn't have a lot of gel, just a little bit to like keep it in um, shape, right? But you don't have to wash it or anything, I think. It's very little. Okay, so her glasses go back on. <laughs> and now we're gonna go ahead and take a closer look at her outfit. It is all one piece. Well, two pieces, because the apron is a separate piece. But as you can see, there's a lot of detail on here. Again, it's all printed, right? <laughs> so, but still, it's pretty nice. I think it is. I mean, it captures the look from the movie, definitely. Um, but it is all printed. And the uh, texture of the dress, I'm not sure what it is, the material, but it's kind of like a stretchy, soft fabric. Here, as you can see, you can take the apron off if you wanted to, but it is attached at the bottom there with little tags. I'm not gonna remove them because I want it to kind of stay in place, but just know that you have the option. 
and her apron does have a little uh, pocket. <laughs> she is wearing brown flat shoes, which are removable, and they're sculpted really nicely. They seem to be pretty accurate to the ones that she wears in the film. Now we're gonna take the outfit off really quickly so you can see the articulation and this new body. I'm Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is a new sculpted body made just for her, and it's 100% accurate to how she looks in the movie. She has rubber legs, they do bend a little bit, and she has the articulation in the arms, the elbows, the hand, I mean the head. <laughs> it's pretty good articulation here. And now we are moving on to King Magnifico. He brings this orb, this blue orb, which I believe is where the wishes are kept when he grants them. I'm not 100% sure, but we did see him with these kind of blue orbs in the trailer. Now, this is just really a piece of plastic. <laughs> um, it kind of looks like there's something in it, but there really isn't. It's just, again, plastic and you place it and it fits nicely on his hand. It did bring a rubber band. So if you wanted to make sure it stay there, you might want to put that rubber band back or never take it off. <laughs> when it comes to his face, they definitely did a great job in the sculpt. It definitely looks like the king. He looks a little bit nicer with the paint job, right? He doesn't look so evil, <laughs> but it looks just like him. He has blue eyes and brown eyebrows and the hair even has the little uh, like silver highlights on there. Of course, the hair is sculpted, but it looks great. They definitely captured him. I guess my only complaint really is that there's this line from his head to the body that, you know, you can kind of see the separation there, but that's just like a manufacturing thing. I'm pretty sure that this is just mine or a few of them and not all of them look like this, right? Now, when it comes to the outfit, he is wearing the outfit from the movie and it seems to be pretty accurate, right? He has a cape, a belt, shoes. Uh, the pants are painted on, you'll see in a second. The hands are sculpted especially for him. This is the first time that I see these, right? They're pretty cool. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and actually remove it in a bit so you can see everything better. But, you know, he's wearing the cape. The cape is really detailed. It is all printed, but all of the details are there from the film, right? On the bottom here, I believe these are horoscope signs, right? I do see Pisces there, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know about this stuff, but it does seem to be accurate. Now, it is attached on here with the little clips. And now that we have removed the cape, you can see that on the inside it's blue with little stars and sparkles. And yeah, it's a really, really pretty cape and really accurate to the one in the film. It is kind of like a rough fabric though. Now the bad thing about this is that when you take the cape off, you have those big clips right there. They could have found a better way to do it, I think. Now the belt is plastic. It has this really cool symbol on it. And it looks really nice. It's painted very well and sculpted nicely as well. Now the actual outfit itself, again, is all one piece. So here it is. I mean, it is all printed and it's a little stiff, but it is pretty accurate to the film. Now here we have King Magnifico without clothes on. And as you can see, this looks like an entirely new body made for him. He's not as strong as Hercules or the torso is not as short as it is for like the other guys that they've made. This is definitely a new torso. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the body looks really good and it looks like something made just for him. Now his pants are painted on, um, they are rubber, right? And they do have some articulation, you know, the typical rubber one. And then he has his shoes, which are removable and look really cool. You can see that the legs are kind of soft, right? But yeah, these are the shoes, they look really, really nice. Next up, we're taking a look at Queen Amaya and she looks fabulous. I think the design for this character it's just so perfect. When it comes to her face sculpt, they captured her perfectly. I mean, I think she looks exactly like the character, right? So far, this whole set, they've done an amazing job with the sculpts, right? She looks incredible. You can see her ears are beneath the hair right there. <laughs> They're just a little hidden. The only small issue with this doll is that she doesn't have her beauty mark. And I don't know how they missed that because Disney, Shop Disney is always on top of it. Somehow they missed that and it is what it is. You can always make it with a marker or something <laughs> or like, you know, the proper tools. But regardless, she's still pretty perfect to me. I mean, she's, they really captured her. Right? You can see her ears are down there. She's wearing her crown that we have seen in the trailers, which looks beautiful. Painted extremely well, right? It's blue and gold, like a dark navy blue, right? With the signs of like the stars on the ear stuff. 
I don't know what that's called. Now, my crown is a little bit loose, um, but you know, that's okay. It's not coming off or anything. She also has a really long braid of this black, brownish, dark hair, and it looks amazing. The length is great. It feels a little hard because it does have like the gel on the tip there, but if you actually touch the middle of it and stuff, it's soft. And I would display it like this with the hair in the front. When it comes to her overall look, she is wearing a gown with a necklace, right? Which we have seen in the trailer. It's plastic painted silver and blue. And then her outfit does resemble um, Elsa's from Frozen 2. I've heard it. <laughs> and yeah, it definitely does with the two things in the back. It's really nice. It's of course all printed, right? There's really not like a huge amount of detail going on here. But the print at least is really accurate to the dress that we have already seen in the movie. My only complaint is that I wish it was a little bit longer because it doesn't necessarily touch the floor. It like almost does, right? Now the cape is like a see-through um, glittery fabric. The glitter does come off, but not by huge amounts, but it does come off a little bit. So keep that in mind. But as you see, you can see her feet, right? Which is what I was saying. I'm not sure if that's accurate to the movie or not. I just personally wish that her feet didn't show. But, you know, again, I don't know if it's accurate. The belt is plastic, but it is attached in the front, so you can't fully remove it. But the outfit, overall, you can, of course. It's all one piece. Here you see it. It's really nice. I mean, it's like I said, it's accurate. It's a little stiff, but it looks really good on her. Now, when it comes to the body, I think this might be a mixture of like the Encanto dolls but definitely new legs. And I think even the torso might be a little bit different, but it's a variation. Now here are the shoes. They look really nice. That one is a little bented there. The knees bent and she has pretty good articulation in the neck, hands, arms, you know, the typical good stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it looks, it looks great. It's definitely a new torso compared to the um, Encanto ones, I'm pretty sure. But you tell me in the comments if you've seen it before. Now, when it comes to like Asha putting her next to her, you can see that she's definitely a taller doll, right? She's supposed to be taller than her. And so it's cool that the dolls represent that. And now, last but not least, we have Asha with her friend, the gold Valentino and the star. First, we're going to take a look at the little star, which is really cute. Again, just a tiny little ball of plastic, but it is sculpted nicely with the eyes painted. And it just looks really cute, right? I love the effect on this plastic. It kind of looks like a marble and you can nicely put it in her hand. Really, really cute. I'm so happy that it's included. I think this star is going to be one of Disney's like main mascots going forward. You're going to see it everywhere like Tinkerbell. That's what I think. <laughs> now we have the goat. His name is Valentino. Really, really cute. Extremely well painted and sculpted. I mean, it's adorable. I think the size uh, proportions are also really good. He might be a little bit smaller than he should be, but not like a huge difference. He looks great next to the dolls and the star and everything else, right? Great job. Absolutely love him. He's going to be a favorite in the movie. I already know that. He stands very well and perfect. They did a great job on him. And finally, we have Asha, and I think she looks so cool. They definitely did a great job on the sculpt. I mean, it looks just like her, right? I definitely think so from the profile and everything. It's perfect. She has her little like baby hairs or edges painted on the actual sculpt. The face print here is so good. I mean, I think it looks amazing. I love the freckles. I love that she has kind of like a half smile. I think one of the little white balls in her eye, the iris, I guess, <laughs> one of them is maybe positioned wrong on my doll. I don't know if that's all of them but it doesn't even matter. I still think she looks gorgeous. She is missing her earrings though. She doesn't bring earrings and she does have them in the movie. Now, when it comes to the hair, she's supposed to have this side of the hair. Um, it's supposed to kind of be like flat, kind of like pushed back. And the way they did that is that they only put very little of the braids and then they put them down with plastic, as you can see there, plastic tags. I think it looks awesome. It's better than sculpted and hair missing and stuff. So I think it looks great. Her hair is super soft. It's a, it's kind of like a blend of black and brown. You can kind of see it, right? The camera doesn't pick it up as much as in person, but yeah, it's like a black and brown mixture and it, the braids are super soft and they have so much movement to them. I think she looks amazing. Absolutely love the hair. She looks beautiful. <laughs> and the face, of course. 
Asha is wearing her already iconic purple outfit from the trailers that we have seen. Um, she's wearing a necklace too, which is made out of plastic and it's red, which the color and stuff is accurate. I wish the necklace was like a thinner plastic or maybe like material, a different material, just to look more accurate, right? Because it does look really thick on her neck. She has this little piece down here. The dress has printed details, but it's still pretty accurate in my opinion. Like the fabric for the sleeves is totally different than the fabric from her dress, right? It has this um, printings on it and it looks really nice. She also has a belt, which of course you can remove, but the little, um, uh, what is this called? The little bag, I guess, is attached to her dress. So you can remove the belt, but and I guess you could remove the, you could remove the little bag too if you wanted to, but it is attached on there, sewn on there, right? So you could remove it, you know, it's up to you, but do what you like. I'm not gonna remove it just because I feel like I want it to stay in place. So here's the outfit off of her. As you can see, the bag is attached on there. Now I love that even though there is printed stuff, they still put the little part of the dress up with actual fabric, you know, instead of just printing it. So I think that looks really great. Now the dress is not floor length either, but it's not supposed to be. Like in the queen's case, I feel like it's supposed to be. Here, I think it's done the way it's supposed to be, right? She's also wearing her shoes, which are really pointy flats. Plastic, again, there's no rubber bands holding the, the shoes to the feet like the Disney store usually does. I guess maybe they're, stop, they're stopping that. She has a little rose on the back because, you know, her kingdom of las rosas. So there's a rose or a flower on the back of the shoe sculpted on there and painted. And then she has this little uh, leg bracelet, I guess. It's like a dark burgundy color. When it comes to articulation, she has um, the rubber legs again, you know, and uh, I don't know if this is a, a new body. I believe that this is a new body as well. It's kind of like a variation of the Isabella, but I guess thinner and longer maybe. I'm not sure. I don't have Isabella at home anymore to compare it. So, you know, but the hands and everything are brand new, definitely. Before we finish the video, I promised a comparison. So here it is. And I feel like this video has just gotten so long, but I did want to show you what the Disney Store version looks like next to the Mattel version, right? And I mean, they're night and date, right? Like they definitely look totally different. I feel like the Mattel's head is really big, while the Disney Store is actually pretty small for its body. Um, I feel like the Disney Store should have a bigger head, <laughs> if anything. But in terms of face paint and sculpt and stuff, Disney Store is definitely my favorite. I just think they capture her better. Now, Mattel does have another face with a smile, and that one is a little better, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the hair, they did the sculpted plastic hair for the side, while Disney Store did the actual hair itself. And the length from Mattel is a little shoppy, right? It's cut up in different areas, while the Disney Store is straight, which makes it feel softer for some reason, right? While the Mattel one just feels a little bit more plasticky. I don't know why, because it seems to be the same texture, but somehow Disney Source is soft. Go figure. Now the dress, they're both printed. What I do like about the Mattel one is that it has this pattern, like a sketch, which is from the movie itself. And that's really, really good. I do like that. But other than that, the Disney Store one, I think wins again, um, just because I think it's better in my opinion. I like it more. But I wish the Disney Store one had the same like sketchy print to it. I think that would make it perfect. But yeah, I absolutely like them both. They're super cute, but my favorite is the Disney Store one. Alrighty, so one last thing before I go, I wanted to show you what this new dolls look like next to a classic Disney Store princess body, just so you can see the proportions and the height and all of that. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> thank you all so much for checking out my video. I'm sorry that it went on for so long, but thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of the dolls in the comments and if you are excited for Wish. And yeah, that's all for today. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye-bye.